thanks for joining me for another workflow walkthrough. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at this landscape image, and I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. So I hope you enjoy it and you learn a little something. All right, let's start off by throwing away all the adjustments I did. Oh, it causes me pain every time I do this, but I'm going to turn the snapshot off and compress the history stack. Okay, now we're going to start off with making the basic adjustments to the exposure. So this image was made with my Olympus OMD EM1 uh, using a 50-year-old adapted uh, manual focus lens which doesn't have the highest contrast but it's a pretty nice lens and has a nice character to it as they say. This was an 85 millimeter lens so 170 millimeter equivalent on my Olympus gave me some nice compression in the scene allowed me to sort of accentuate the rows between the canola flowers in the field here okay first things first basic adjustments we're going to turn the exposure up on this thing to get the middle grays where I want them to be I think it's going to be about one stop and that's looking pretty good if I turn on my overexposure indicators I do see that that's just slightly overexposing the yellows and the flowers I'm okay with that because uh, I'm gonna bring that back later uh, black level I think I'll dial in a little bit of black level correction to push the blacks down just a touch not too much okay looking looking good there so that's a good start that brings my overall brightness up but the image still is, is lacking punch and doesn't have quite the impact that the uh, final image is, is gonna have that I want so the next thing I'm gonna do is bring the gamut of the image back in in control using the filmic module I you don't have to use filmic on this image it doesn't have that high of a dynamic range but I like what it does with the colors in the extreme saturations so I'm gonna use it um, I'm going to turn it on, and first thing I'm going to do is set the middle gray luminance since I've already adjusted my exposure. Set middle gray to where it should be, about 18.5%. <clears throat> okay, now my whites are, are far too white, so I'm going to dial those down to, eh, that looks pretty good there, about 4 four exposure values from neutral and then my blacks will be about minus four to minus five this should be sort of opposite of where the the whites are and I'm gonna look at this portion of the curve here and try not to clip this too much uh, if I wanted to get rid of it completely I'd be all the way down here but if I leave this at around four or five then I can come in and adjust my latitude to get rid of that clipped area about 40 percent okay good so that's the the next step now filmic has sort of desaturated the image a little bit which is is normal uh, so I'm going to address that desaturation next I'm going to come into my color balance module turn my saturation up That's looking looking pretty good. Nice bright yellows. Maybe get a little bit of contrast. Not much. I don't want to go crazy. Okay, getting my uh, saturation back to where I wanted. Now my sky is looking a little bit too gray. And frankly, my greens and my yellows, I don't have enough contrast between my greens and my yellows in this part of the image. So I'm going to... Uh, work on that in a little bit here let's see what do I want to do next I think the next thing I want to do is adjust the colors so I'm going to I'm going to use a tone curve here to separate my greens and my yellows in this area a little bit so I'm going to open up the tone curve and instead of working with link channels which basically just gives me a a linear curve of luminance. I'm going to use one of the options here where I get lab independent channels. So I get a luminance curve, I get a green magenta curve, and I get a blue yellow curve. I'm going to come into my blue yellow curve and I'm going to sample the flowers. And I see that this 
pink area here, the, I'm covering that range. So I am going to want to pull up the yellows here and maybe pull down the blues slightly. Okay, and that has improved the color contrast in the flowers. Might be hard to see in a YouTube video, but they're looking better. I'm going to come in here to the green magenta channel and I'm going to pull the green side down. And again, that has definitely improved the color contrast in the flowers. Yeah, taking away the magenta cast. So this is before and this is after and the greens look uh, I think more natural now and the yellows have a little bit more contrast and again I appreciate that might not be quite so obvious in a YouTube video but I'm processing this as I would normally you know the next thing I see here is my sky my my blue sky is looking pretty pretty dull uh, unfortunately it wasn't a it was a clear day but it, there wasn't a lot of color and this lens uh, tends to wash out contrast in the sky so I'm going to use the color zones and again I'm going to use a color picker here and I'm going to select an area of my sky. I'm pretty sure I know where it is. And I see, yeah, obviously my sky's here in the blues. So I'm going to start by pulling up the saturation uh, and then I'm going to pull down the lightness and make my sky darker. There we go good so turn that adjustment off and turn that adjustment on and it definitely makes a difference it has introduced some noise into the sky we'll handle that uh, handle that in a couple of steps here I'm not too worried about it right now good now overall sharpness and contrast let's go to my favorite tool the contrast equalizer I would normally come into the contrast equalizer and just start turning up the fine level details which I will do here um, but I also am looking to create a little bit more contrast on a large scale level to bring out the rows of, of color here and also to bring out the the trees on the background so I'm going to that's going to be down here in my large area I'm going to pull up this just a little bit there we go just, just turn that on and off and look at this area of the image here in particular as I turn it off. It sort of blend, blends together as I turn it on. It brings it back out and the trees uh, start to stand out a little bit more. Maybe I don't want the full strength of this. I'm just going to dial it back down a little bit. and I think that's pretty okay. So I've now uh, gotten the colors where I want them to be. I've got the overall brightness and, and contrast where I want it to be. Uh, I need to I need to get rid of the noise in the image, so I'm going to zoom in here to the sky area at 100 percent, and I'm just and I can really get a good eye, uh, view of the noise there. And I'm going to hit the profile denoise and let it do its thing. I find the profile denoise in Darktable's latest versions is pretty damn good and doesn't require a lot of messing about by me. Still have really nice detail. Uh, tree limbs back here and a nice clean sky so I'm gonna I'm gonna call that good good so this image <clears throat> this image is about 90% of where I'd like it to be the last thing I want to do is I want to give this a little bit of glow now to soften it it's gotten a little little overly crunchy with what I did with the contrast uh, but that was intention intentional so why would I adjust contrast up and then and then put a blur over top of that contrast to give it glow instead of just not increasing the contrast to start with the reason is because you have the underlying image with the deep contrast you want you put the glow over the top of it as sort of a layer and you so you have the sharpness and you overlay that sharpness with a little bit of softness without sacrificing the the uh, the overall contrast in the image so what does that mean well that means I'm going to come over here to my low pass filter and I'm going to apply my version of the Orton effect so I turn the low pass filter on set the radius to match my my sensor and I'm going to dial the contrast back I'm going to turn the brightness up 
I'm going to pull the saturation down. And we're going to leave it like that. No, we're not, of course not. Uh, we're going to apply this with a lightning blend mode. And we're going to dial this way back to maybe 20 to 25 percent. So let's turn that off. This is the image before the low pass filter. Turn it back on. Here's the image after low pass filter. Really started to bring a nice, nice glow out in the image and give it the bright spring warm feel that I wanted it to have. And I think that's going to about do it for this image. So let's take a look here. We have our original snapshot. Let's jump in here, take a snapshot of the image, go back to our before we had any adjustments made, and there we go. <laughs> so here's our image before, our raw image out of the camera, and here's our image after we've made all of our adjustments. Okay, thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a couple new things. This was a pretty simple image to work with, but it gave us an opportunity to explore several tools in Darktable. I'll see you next time.